Okay, today I'm going to walk through some steps and what I think are best practices for using an audio moth um, for a field recording. Um, a lot of my field recordings are in forests. I study birds and I'm trying to figure out how many species are in a forest and sometimes that can be a lot. So these audio moths are actually really effective because they can record for much longer periods of time than a person can be out there and they're not um, creating any kind of disturbance to the birds. So you may get some more species um, by using these. And so this is what they look like. They're very small, they're affordable. Um, and so you can get a number of them, usually get a number of them and deploy them out in the field. So um, when I'm preparing to do that, the first thing I do is make sure I put some fresh batteries into the audio moth. Um, and then I check the SD card. Um, the SD card, We'll have your sound files from where, whenever you've deployed them before. I always make sure to save those files in at least a couple of locations um, so that they're well backed up. Some people may opt to actually just keep the cards once they've filled up as one of the backup locations. Um, depending on your project, you may be, end up going through a lot of cards that way. I tend to um, remove the files from the cards after I have safely backed them up in at least two locations but I always check to see what is on the card and double check um, before they go out in the field that they are cleared of any files from previous work. And so um, let me share my screen here. Here is what was on my SD card. These are files I just generated. I know I don't need them. The audio moth is um, pretty handy in that if it's properly programmed, it will show you the date and time of the recording. This one hasn't yet because I just put the batteries in and every time you change the batteries, the auto moth loses information about what time it is. Um, so I don't need these files. I'm going to remove them, but instead of just deleting them, I'm going to format the card. Um, if you continue to delete the files or, or cut and paste the files in your backup locations without formatting, sometimes you can end up with some issues being able to program the audio moth and you're sort of your first warning sign that that is happening is you'll get some combination of LED indicators um, and so on the audio mouth by the switch actually by um, the where the SD card goes in there are some there's a red and a green line and they'll flash in different combinations to tell you whether or not they're working or how they're working so um, these problems are almost always fixed, at least in my experience, by formatting the SD card. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to, and so I do that by right clicking on the SD card. I select format and it'll ask me, um, do, you know, it'll show me what it's going to do to format the card. And it's going to warn me, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to select yes. Format is now complete. Now, before I eject the card, actually, I'm going to rename it. So one pretty useful thing that you can do is to name your SD card to be associated with your recorder. My recorder number here, so I la individually label all my recorders. This one is labeled 24-08. And I'm going to name my card that same name. That way, if for some reason the card gets separated from the recorder, I know which recorder it belonged to. You could go further and name it by the project. You could say Forest Project 2408, or you may even get it more specific and include the specific location where you know you're going to put the audio moth. And all of those are great ideas. I tend not to get too specific because there is from time to time some troubleshooting and some need to switch out recorders in the field. And um, I, I will make sure and document those, that information is always very important in the field, usually in a field notebook, but also once the audio moth is running, if it's recording, I will speak into it and actually say the date, the location, the number of the audio moth and all that information into the audio moth so that it's also doc documented on the SD card. Anyway, my audio moth is now named properly. I'm going to eject it. Okay. And then I put the audio moth into the 
SD card slot. You have to do that before you program it. All these steps, if you start to do a whole bunch of them, they can get jumbled up. Um, the next step is to get the audio moth set up properly. So you might've noticed that the files, the date, um, the files are named by um, date and time. And the date was 1970 on mine. And that's because I've just put batteries in. So I wanna make sure the time is set properly. And I also always just check to see if the firmware is up to date. So I use this USB cable, plug it into the micro USB port on the audio moth. And then I can use a, a, a series of three applications to program uh, the audio moth. And so one of these is the Automoth configuration app. We also have the Flash app and the Time app. And so you'll wanna download all these for your operating system. And I go through um, do, and I do the Flash app and then the Time app and then the configuration. So let me get the Flash app opened. Okay, let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen here. And here is our Flash app. Okay, so first off, I wanna make sure that it's the audio moth is being detected by the Flash app, and it is. It's telling me that um, here's the most current version of the software. Um, I have flashed it already with that software, but you can always, if you're if you can't remember, you can just update it again, and it will take less than a minute often to update. Okay, and so often you don't get a lot of sign that you've had success on these programs other than some changing, some subtle changing of the color, you know, and you saw the bar and now the audio mouth is updated, the firmware is updated. Um, now I'm gonna set the time on the audio mouth. And so I've opened up the time app and you can see right now, Audio Moth, this is the default. It starts at 1970 on January 1st at midnight. And um, I want to set the time. And Audio Moth is always running in UTCs rather than local time, but we'll get to how you can program in local time in just a minute. So I'm going to set time and it's setting the time based on my laptop. So I am on um, Pacific time in the United States. It's 2.25 PM. So I'm going to set the time it's going to set the time for 2.25 p.m., but in UTCs, whatever that time is in UTC. Okay, which is 9.25 in the evening. So um, now the time is set, and we see that the date is correct, and, and you just kind of have to get used to looking at the UTCs and, and making sure that it seems right. You can always check your UTCs and see if um, your time and the UTC is, is matching up if you want to make absolutely sure. Um, then finally, once the time is set, I'm ready to configure my audio moth. Okay, and this process is going to be really different for everybody because everybody's got a different project, got a different plan, but here, here are the steps that I go through. So the first thing I want to do once I get into the configuration app is I want to go to setting it to local time. And it so happens that I'm UTC minus UTC seven. And um, this is the local time right now, 226. So that makes it a lot easier for me to program it correctly. Um, under the recording menu, uh, I select 48 kilohertz as my sampling rate. And um, that's a pretty standard sampling rate, 44.1 and 44.8 for, or 48 for people who are studying birds. Um, if you're studying bats, you're going to want to go higher. Um, this is a high quality wave, you know, high quality wave type file that gets recorded with very little loss of information for what I need to do in my, my work. Um, 
And just know that the higher the sampling rate, the more disk space you're going to use and the more battery um, power you're going to use up. So you want to get a good balance there. For my mic gain, I pick high. Now, it really depends, again, on your study um, system and, and what you're trying to study. But my um, detection ability is better with the high gain mic. So it's a more sensitive mic. It can record things farther away. The downside is if a bird or some other animal comes right up to it and makes a loud sound, it will peek out the sound and distort things. But that doesn't happen in my case all that often. Um, because I want the audio moth to go on and off every single day, I select enable sleep and record cyclic recording. And then this is where you decide what your recording schedule is going to be. How many minutes or seconds do you want the audio moth on? And how many minutes or seconds do you want it off or hours? Okay. And so for my program here, I'm going to select a sleep duration of five seconds. And my recording duration is going to be nine minutes and 55 seconds. And so every 10 minute unit in an hour, I'm going to get um, all but five seconds of recording time. And I do some sleep time just to have manageable sized files. And for me, 10 minute files are great. They often in an individual 10 minute file capture quite a lot of information about what's there at that moment. Enable LED. Um, the LEDs are really useful. And so that's often useful just to keep these boxes checked and also the battery level indication. If you're concerned at all about any interference of the LED in um, the quality of your sound recording, you can unselect them. Um, I'm going through a phase right now where I'm trying that out to see if that improves the quality of my sound recordings, um, but you may wanna keep them on because those LEDs can be, be really useful. Schedule. So now we know it's going to record nine minutes and 55 seconds and then rest for five seconds. But how much of the day or night do you want that to be happening? Um, for some projects, like the project I'm currently working on, we want pretty exhaustive sampling. So we're going to be sampling from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. We'll capture many nocturnal birds and obviously all the diurnal birds, except for un unless something sings out every five seconds that, that we're not recording. So we have a pretty exhaustive sampling um, recording period. You can add several recording periods in here. Maybe you want to sample at dawn. So you say you record from five till nine or five till seven in the morning. And then you want to record at dusk, say, from 7 to 9 p.m. So you could set two times to be doing that. Once you've done that, it will tell you down here at the bottom what, what kind of, what, what each day is gonna look like for you. So each day, this will produce 102 files, each 57 megabytes, totaling 5,826 megabytes. Daily energy consumption will be approximately 210 milli. Amps, I think, is what the units are, but MAH. Um, so you know what the battery power, you can sort of calculate how long you think the, your SD cards and batteries will la last. Now, I always go to these other menus, often, although I often don't do much. I just want to make sure I, both of these are selected for me. I don't want to set any kind of filters, though you may want to set filters. If you're, say, sampling bats, you might want to filter out the lower frequency sound so that you, you're, um, you're processing sounds that are mainly in the sound range of, say, bats, which are high frequency. Um, and then advanced, again, I just go on there to, to make sure that nothing's selected. Now, you may need some of these advanced settings depending on your project. So I'm going to configure my audio moth. And once it sort of goes back to its original color, I assume it's configured and then I can eject it. Okay. So now my audio moth is programmed and ready to go. I have set off the LEDs so that they won't run. Um, I'm gonna go back through and click LEDs on here very quickly so that you can at least see. It's nice to be able to turn them on and, and get an idea if it's going to work. So here, hold on just a second. 
Okay, so if I go back into um, my configuration app onto the recording schedule, then um, if I select to have the LED on, then um, you can actually check your audio moth as soon as you've ejected it. Okay. And so um, I'm gonna switch. The audio moth has three settings, off is in the middle, custom is to the left of the middle button and default is to the right. And the default is just an on and off recording schedule. Sometimes the default schedule will work just fine for you. I'm gonna switch it on to custom because that's where the problems happen. And then I check my LEDs and right now I have a flashing red LED and it's flashing fast. And that means it's recording me right now. And what it's doing right now, because we are at 2.33, it's in the middle of a 10 minute cycle that it's only gonna give me about seven minutes of recording here or six minutes and 55 seconds. And then it should go off for five seconds. So I could even watch it and see if that's what it does. When it goes off, it's going to just give me a slower red flash that it's resting right now. Um, but there is a page with all of the LEDs and it's important to know what they mean because sometimes they're indicating an error and they're telling you they're not, that the audio moth's not gonna work. So the LEDs can be really useful for this. So um, that is how I program an audio moth for field deployment. I hope you found this useful. Good luck with your recording.